hold on. Okay, this meeting is now being recorded. Uh, anybody else who would like to speak? Uh, Erica Wolf. Hi, morning. Um, Erica Wolf from 18 Golden Street. And I want to just echo what Chi Ting said that I think the seven to 10 parking ban has worked pretty well. It's not perfect, no solution will be, but I think it's worked well enough um, to be sustainable and to make a difference um, for our residents here. Okay. Uh, uh, Lillian Wong. Lillian, are you there? Uh, you're muted, Lillian. Lillian Wong from 10 Myrtle Street. Yeah. Um, apologies, my video doesn't seem to be working this morning. I just wanted to add um, to what Deborah uh, said that we sort of uh, were the recipients of what happened um, when Myrtle Street was not included. Um, as a result, I really think that whatever policy uh, comes about, it needs to be equitable for all the streets abutting the high school so that no one has to experience what Lower Myrtle Street has had to experience. And um, I also wanted to add, I don't live on Upper Myrtle Street, but I do go to work um, in the morning around 7.45, 8, something like that. It's impossible between the Wellington School and the high school to actually get up the street. Sometimes I'm on Lower Myrtle Street for more than a minute as people zigzag back and forth. And many times I've almost been hit by traffic coming off of School Street, turning left onto Myrtle. It's, you know, it's been a nightmare um, this past year. So I think equitable treatment for all the streets would, uh, would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Helen Golding. Hi. Um, I just wanted to um, echo a point that Bob McGaw made in an email that he sent, um, which is that in addition to the fact that the seven to 10 um, ban is basically working pretty well, um, the alternative of going to a two hour restriction would require uh, the use of um, police resources that I feel could be put to a much better use. Thanks. Okay. Uh... Anybody else? Uh, Priscilla, uh, Sue, that is- Sue Dem. Sue Dem, hi. S Silent B. Um, I live at 59 Louise Road. Um, we haven't really, we're far enough up the street that we haven't really had a problem, although we've had one of the signs in front of our house. Um, I think the idea of a two hour restricted uh, means that if you have a contractor coming who's gonna be there for the day with their couple of trucks outside your house, you may have a problem. Um, and does that mean you'd have to get a special permit so that you can have people parked in front of your house the way you you have now? Um, anyway, I, I think that the system has been working well. We haven't had any cars parking on, on Louise Road, but I think the two hour is, would not be as good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Priscilla Hughes. <laughs> thank you. Priscilla Hughes, 17 Louise Road. We are at the bottom of Louise Road and we have had a constant issue until the parking ban was put into effect with students parking, not only on one side of the street, but on both sides of the street, making it very difficult for us to get out of our driveways and certainly to get down the street and even for trash trucks to get up the street on occasion. I think the three hour ban so far seems to be a seems to be working fairly well. And I second Helen's motion, Helen's idea and Bob McGaw's idea that police enforcement of the uh, two hour ban might be unwieldy. The three hour ban seems to work. So kids do take coffee breaks, drive off and come back. The three hour ban seems to be okay. Um, and for contractors and so forth, I, perhaps just notifying the police that they're there or perhaps just knowing that it's a truck would would be acceptable. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Priscilla. Um, anybody else? Mm -hmm. uh, how do I raise my hand? 
uh, well, you, speaking up is good enough. So, <laughs> Car Carolyn Bishop. Thank you. Um, these early morning technologies. Um, I agree with the um, the original, the seven to ten. Um, it's not enough just to say three hour ban, but those are the hours that I think the most effective where kids are arriving. Um, they do come back, move their car, have lunch in their car. Some come a little earlier than they should, but that really helps. But the things that there are two issues that bother me. One is I think it should be one side of the street only. The I trying to come down these streets when there are par cars parked on both sides of Lower Orchard and uh, Go uh, no Oak and Narrow Myrtle make it impossible for any kind of vehicle that emergency vehicle to get through. And it's hard enough to make your car weave through these, these both sides parking. So it's been very helpful on Lower Orchard to have one side, no parking. It's very clear. The other thing that is a concern and isn't addressed really with this is the pickup. And at Lower Orchard, because we have the, the pedestrian light, it's very effective for people who want to pick up their kids, except that we get parking on both sides, idling cars, uh, one of these cars always has to block the fire hydrant at the bottom of the, the street. And the kids are waiting around, standing on our vegetation, dropping their snack bar wrappings in the bushes. And, it's, um, and not to mention all the idling. It's really an issue. And I, I wish or hope that there's some place on campus where this could be moved, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> and removed from, Oak, from Orchard Street, Lower Orchard so that we have no pickups there because that's almost more trouble than it is with the three hour parking. But thanks so much for your time and your effort and your work on this. And I think there are solutions. And it'll be wonderful when the high school is, the middle school is open and maybe all this will go away, but we have to live through it. Thanks so much. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I will comment on the very last thing you said. Uh, La 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 Larry Link um, has joined us by the way. Uh, let, let me just, I, what I meant, uh, Carolyn, is that um, the opening of the middle school is going to be a, a brand new environment, and I, for one, have no idea what to expect. I think we, we're just going to have to see what happens and react accordingly. Um, uh, let's see, anybody else would like to comment? So uh, while waiting for uh, somebody, anybody's gathering their thoughts, I would say we received a good number of emails in the last week or two, probably 99% uh, were in favor of perpetuating the current system in some form. Oh, sorry. Uh, and n nobody that I can remember was in favor of a two hour zone. So let me just to put that out there. Uh, Louise Halstead. Um, this is Bert Halstead and Louise at 24 Louise Road. I'd like to uh, just register our agreement, uh, particularly I think with Sue Dem, but also Bob McGaw and, and Helen Golding. I, I think that the uh, uh, seven to 10 ban has been working well on our street and um, I think it's uh, less inconvenience for us who live on the road than uh, than a two hour ban all day would be. Okay, uh, bringing us or maybe keeping the hundred percent record intact with that comment. Uh, anybody else? And uh, let me make it clear that the um, the reason. Uh, well, at least the, a primary reason in my mind for even considering the two hour proposal or three hour or some variant of that was finding something that was actually easiest for the police to enforce because one of the scarcest resources all year was enforcement. And the uh, Paul Garabedin, who's the traffic sergeant is on the call. Uh, his view was that there were actually advantages to having a time zone like two hours or three hours and um, but uh, 
we, he also said he could go either way. So the, it was not driven by some uh, more, there was no more cosmic reason for suggesting a two or three hour zone than finding the most efficient uh, system that the police could enforce. Uh, Carolyn, yeah. Just um, a word, it struck me rather belatedly that you, with the two hour zone, you can have two hours, two hours, two hours, two hours on the same street and there's no way the street knows to tell anyone, hey, wait a minute, you parked here for two hours already, go somewhere else. So there's no, at least seven to 10 is very clear. If the policeman drives by and cruises each of the streets, there's someone there, there's not someone, there's someone in the wrong area at the wrong time. Well, so we couldn't see. We long. talked about that at our last meeting, the, the police thought they could deal with that, but they all, uh, uh, Sergeant Garabedian indicated that whether it was a two or three hour zone or, or something like what we did last year, it could be, uh, either one could work. So. But the difference being you can't, the two hours can be any time of the school day yeah, but, and it could be repeated. So, uh, you know. It, yeah, I would say that, I mean, two hours is actually probably the most common um, parking restriction that we have in Belmont. And so it's something that, you know, again, in talking with Paul, I mean, that they're used to doing. And so it's very familiar. I think that's the other thing. Uh, I mean, the, the difference around the high school is, because I, I mean, there are two hours in front of my house, but the difference um, at the high school is, uh, the students have a strong incentive to uh, relocate their cars basically in the same zone. Whereas if you're in a, uh, near Cushing Square, like I am, somebody typically comes, they go to the store or a restaurant, and then they go. They're, they're not trying to stay there all day. So the high school is a slightly different uh, environment that way. Uh, I agree. Um, uh, Sudam is back. I guess my question is, if you have a two hour limit, then what do you do if you've got a roofer at your house for two days? Uh, Sergeant Garabini, I mean, we, this issue arises all over town and the, the police make accommodations for that. So do you want, do you want to comment, Paul? Just like you said, Roy, uh, we'd make uh, accommodations. So the officers or the parking officers would probably go and speak with the contractor and find out what they're doing. If they're doing work at the house, everything would, you know, they would usually just allow them to park there or they would seek permission from the traffic office beforehand. A lot of the contractors do. So it, we've never really had any issues that, uh, contractors aren't able to work in front of a two-hour house. So uh, it, it, it works itself out. Yeah, I mean, I've been here 30 years with a two-hour zone. With I feel like I've hired every tradesman in Northern Massachusetts and uh, there, there's never been an issue that way. Okay, thank you. Uh, Erica Wolf is back. Oh, hi, yes, Erica Wolf from 18 Godin. My other concern about the two-hour um, is that would essentially mean in the morning when we've got people backing out of their driveways trying to get to work, the kids coming down the school, the street to get to school and bikes and cars, um, you're gonna have that buildup of cars parked on the side. And I think that's really the most dangerous time for there to be a lineup of cars where I see students on bikes weaving in and out, you know, and you don't know who's about to drop off and pull back out, who's actually parking. So I would also be concerned if they did the two hours and there were kids there at 7 a.m. while they're trying to get to school that it just becomes really unsafe again. Yeah, just to be clear, the, the actual intent, both of the seven to 10 program and the, and the hourly program is to eliminate the student parkers altogether. So it's not that people would suddenly be parking there at eight o'clock. It would, it would be to make it logistically impossible to park there at all if you were a student. Um, I think they're creative and, and you know, have yeah. good intent to move their cars around. Yeah. Okay, uh, Priscilla Hughes is back. Oh, uh, yes, Priscilla Hughes, Lower, lower Louise Road. Um, one of the things that also is an issue, and I know it's slightly off the subject, but not quite, is that with the to parking, it's got to be enforced that space between the intersection and going on to Concord Avenue. It's very difficult to pull out onto Concord Avenue with cars parked within that 10 or 20 foot uh, division before the intersection or after the intersection. And it's got to be enforced on both sides, on Concord Avenue and on Louise Road. 
it is difficult to see, especially where many of the kids are driving SUVs. If you're driving a small car or a sedan, trying to see what's coming on Concord Avenue is extremely difficult. So I'd like to see that addressed too, even okay. though it's off top subject. And uh, uh, after the comment period, I will present a map uh, that will address this point at least partially because another wild card that will make this year different from <clears throat> last year is a restriping program on Concord Avenue, which is going to happen uh, sometime this summer. Um, and what, it has many features. One of them actually should be to improve uh, clearance on the corners that uh, Priscilla just described. Um, okay, uh, anybody else? Um, this is Deborah Galley. I don't know how to put my hand up. I, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so Deborah Galley, 16 Myrtle Street, representing Lower Myrtle Street. And again, I just, I don't think it's too much to go another day without just confirming that Lower Myrtle Street will be included in these rules since we have known parking issues. This was the only time we didn't have parking issues was the um, daytime parking. And when the ban was put in place, of course it moved to Myrtle Street. And so I just, <clears throat> we've been told since last year that we could be included. So can you just confirm that lower Myrtle Street is included <clears throat> in whatever parking? Uh, Deborah, I'm not, I'm not prepared to confirm that right now. But you said I, you 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 yourself made the offer at the end of last year where you said it was too late to have for us to, to lower Myrtle Street to have a say in whatever the answer would be, but that we could be included. De De Deborah, the I, this is something that the committee will discuss. I, I'm not going to speak for the committee right now. We've, we've heard the request and the committee needs to take it up. This is not my unilateral decision, but we, we've heard the request. And then you said we could, and now it seems like you're saying- The, the committee needs to take it up and deliberate. Sorry, Sorry. it just seems frustrating, but uh, when will we be contacted? I, I Listen, this is a public comment period. I, I'm not prepared to answer every question right now. All right. Uh, Chi Ting? Yeah, just one more comment. Um, so do we have any clarity from the school whether or not they are going to be using that uh, that round driveway for pick up and drop off? Because I think a lot of these issues, especially the, the, the drop off is one the drop off is one thing, but the pickup. So the seven to 10 addresses the, the pickup part on the traffic and the students parking there. But there's also the drop the sorry, the drop off, the pickup which you know, uh, I think Carolyn was mentioning, there's a lot of people idling on, on uh, Orchard. They also do idle on, on Godin and a lot of other streets. It's, I know there's a no idling law, but I, you know, I don't think a lot of residents wanna go out and confront people who are idling in front of their houses. So you know, again, if, do we have any clarity from the school whether or not they are going to be allowing pickup on campus because that would make, uh, that, would, that would actually ease a lot of the burden in the neighborhood. Or, or we can extend the that no parking to like also three to five or something like that. Uh, the school will make the driveway not just open for drop off if they, as they did in the second half of the year. I asked the superintendent to actually promote that to the parents and uh, in their communications with the parents about uh, parking policies pick up. I believe is the same, but I will double check with. Okay. with I mean, I, I think it's not just to let them know that it's available, but to encourage them and to tell them to not be picking up on the side street. Well, yes, they can communicate all of those things, uh, and whether people actually do it is a, you know, is another question. But the fair enough. But the, at the at the if they could at least encourage and say that they strongly discourage the pickups on the side streets, it goes a long way. Right. I, are some I, people going to ignore it? Absolutely. But but at the very least, there is, it will take off some of the burden. Well, I, I met with the superintendent last week. Um, 
they are committed to making the driveway open for certainly for drop off. And I, I was down there during the year and counted about 130 cars that dropped off during the peak morning hour. And I said that uh, if that could be uh, boosted to something like 200, I thought that was very possible given the, the capacity of that roadway. And they said they would do what they could to uh, encourage parents to do that. Okay. I mean, like I said, not it's not just encourage, but also discouraging them from the from the neighborhood usage. Well, um, uh, understood. It, it's it's just a, basically a statement. Please do not drop off your pick up your children on the side streets. Please use the driveway. It's it's a very simple statement. Yeah, and and I think they're willing to try that, but uh, with okay. no no guarantees. Yeah, no, I get it, but at, at the very least, there's an effort in there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anybody else? So I, let me just, while waiting for any, anybody else who wants to raise their hand, uh, I will run through um, some thoughts uh, with a map to make clear at least proposals that I have uh, to try to get the year started, which would include both uh, a side street parking program and also pick up and drop off that reflects the striping, which <coughs> I suspect a lot of people are not really familiar with. Um, but the, the striping on Concord Avenue is going to be a pretty significant change. And uh, I, I think it's going to happen and we just have to then see how it plays out and see what adjustments are necessary, uh, if any, uh, in light of that. But it's going to be a big change in behavior. Um, any other comments? I think it's fair to say that the, you know, the probably prompted by the email that I sent out, the, the big uh, kind of decision point is something like a two hour program versus what we did last year. And I think the sentiment uh, is clearly overwhelming to not, not to do a two hour program or a three hour program. Um, that, and uh, so let me just, while waiting for any, any other hands to be raised, um, the, <clears throat> the issue that led us to even reconsider the seven to 10 program is, is the fact that at 10 o'clock, certainly to my surprise, an awful lot of students seem to have time to leave school and drive their cars around. Um, so that, that was news to me. And sometimes the students would jump the gun and would even start parking at 930, I think gambling that nothing would happen until 10 o'clock. And suddenly by mid morning, a lot of the issues were recreated on the closest inside streets that we were hoping to avoid um, at the beginning of the school year. So um, people should realize that, you know, that this is a very um, uh, geographically localized kind of issue that there were pro the, the problems emerged uh, first and foremost on Oak Street because it's the most convenient street for students to park on. And then it, uh, it's like ripples in a pond uh, uh, where the effects can radiate out to the side streets, but it's, they're attenuated. But the thing is when you put a restriction on uh, like just Oak Street, students then do move wholesale to someplace else. And you know that's something we predicted, and then we did the experiment, and it happened last January that when you just put a restriction on, say, Oak and Orchard, suddenly an army of students moved off to Stone Road. So it became a balancing act to find something that uh, would have the desired effect of largely um, not just it's not just keeping students off the side streets, but um, 
achieving something on the side streets that is workable from a public safety point of view, vehicle uh, access point of view and so forth. The goal in all of this is to get students to park on the school side of Concord Avenue, because uh, we studied this a lot and there is space actually to accommodate the vast majority of students. The issue is that it's more convenient for students to try to park closer than that. Um, even though the incremental walking time, if you go out as far as Underwood Street, the, inc the incremental walking time is around two minutes, but that's, what, that's how people are. They don't wanna walk the two minutes, but so we have to find a way to get them to do that. Uh, because if you, if you go from Underwood Street all the way down to the mobile station, we actually can accommodate uh, probably all of the students uh, in the fall and nearly all of the students in the spring. Uh, and that's, that's the goal here. Um, let's see. Uh, anybody else would like to comment specifically um, on any of these issues, or I'm happy to move on then to my own material for the group to start considering. And I have Marty, a presentation from Marty November 2 that, that I'd like to run through. The goal here, let me just say it's 8.30 now. Uh, we really do need to, I would say, to vote a recommendation for the select board this morning because the select board then needs to take it up at the next meeting. I assume we'll approve whatever recommendation comes from this group. And then there's the work of DPW has to physically manufacture permanent markings, permanent signs. The, the signs, the paper signs we used last year are not, not really workable. Um, I wanna make, a permanent metal signs that get put in the ground so they're there and they need to be there for when school opens first week in September. So that, that really means that the process has to get started now. Uh, so that, that's- Roy, Roy that's I'm sorry. I, I don't know how to raise my hand. It's Deborah Galley again. Yeah. How can we vote when we don't know if we're- Well, you're, you're not voting, the, the committee is voting. The, this committee of vote. This is a committee decision, okay. not not a matter for the general public. Okay. Uh, Jeff Roth. Yeah. Oh yeah. Thanks. Um, I'm sorry I was late this morning, just getting into work and stuff. Um, and I missed some of the discussion. I just wanted to um, say, for the record, the um, <clears throat> I did have a discussion with Kate Ellis, who lives on uh, Stone Road, uh, this past week, and she had just expressed concern about. Uh, the prol proliferation of signs on that street and the other streets and uh, just having some concern about a lot of excessive number of signs. And I, again, apologize for missing the earlier discussion. Maybe this already was discussed, but I just want to point that out. And I, I, I do think that that is a, um, a somewhat of a valid concern. And, and uh, you know, just wanted to mention that uh, uh, for her because I know she couldn't uh, be here this morning. Uh, thank you, Jeff. This has been expressed by more than one person uh, for some reason just on Stone Road. Uh, the issue, though, is if there's no signs, then there's no enforcement. It's that simple. So if somebody doesn't want any signs, then there will not there will not be any. There's nothing to enforce. So that, that's a pretty stark choice in terms of how many signs there need to be. I don't know, Paul, it seems to me that the signs are spaced every two or three houses, but is there a guideline for that? Yeah, um, I mean, this this is kind of new to everyone, the, the permit, so seven to 10. So I'd probably just defer to the DPW, meet with Paul Mosco and, uh, and, and them and see what, you know, what you recommend. We had talked about putting, if we're gonna do the seven to 10 again, putting one at the beginning of each street and on either side, say on Oak Street, on Golden Street. So cars entering and cars enter, uh, exiting the street would would see the sign. Um, you know, that might help 
the residents just because there's only one on each, you know, on the end of each street. But then again, like you said, if the signs aren't visible, you know, are, are they going to be are the students not going to pay attention to them? Are they going to start parking there? But I think with education and, and, and enforcement, the first couple of weeks, having our parking control officers out there, a sign on the beginning and end of each street would, uh, w w where we would start and we would see where we would go from there. Okay. I mean, my, my feeling is that we should put in the minimum number of signs that allow the police to enforce the program. And if just having one at the top of the street is good enough, um, then that's fine. Uh, typically when there are two hour parking zones or something, there's, there are quite a few signs. So, but you know, whatever is, whatever is the minimum I think should work, but it, it's not zero. So no, as soon as you, as soon as the vote is made and approved, we'll, we can sit down and meet with the DBW and, um, and, and see, you know, what the options are and, you know, what we can get ordered right away. Okay. All right. Um, if there are no other comments, then I will move on to, um, let me start with, uh, I'll start with my two, you know what, I, I'll start with my modified seven to 10 motion, because it sounds like there's really not a lot of uh, interest in the two hour variant of it anyway. Uh, sorry, Lillian Wong is, is back. Um, yes, I, I understand that Myrtle Street is not on this agenda. Um, should the committee vote not to include lower Myrtle Street or Myrtle Street, who do we follow up with? Good. And um, maybe Sergeant Garabedian can advise us, should it happen again? And one is not able to get to work. I guess the thing to do is to call the police every morning. Well, let, let me address Myrtle Street actually when I get started with my comments. Thank you. Okay, uh, let me see if I can. Uh, okay, with if there are no other comments, um, you know it's eight thirty-eight. Um, I'm going to uh, close the public comment of the hearing, and then from this point uh, forward, it would just be committee deliberations. It wouldn't be public comment. So this is your last chance to weigh in um, if you want to comment on this program. OK, uh, so I'm going to close the public comment and move on to uh, committee deliberation. I'm going to start, as I said at the meeting uh, last time, uh, we really need to reduce uh, this discussion to motions that the select board can actually vote on. So. Uh, I'm, I prepared a draft motion for the committee to consider, and I'd like to walk through that for a couple of minutes, uh, if I can figure out which one it is. Hold on a second. Um, just give me one moment. All right, hopefully you can all see that. Um, there is a, um, a map, which I'll show you in a, a, at least a portion of which I'll show you in a moment that shows the layout of the parking areas on Concord Avenue uh, after the striping program goes into effect. We can't see anything. All we see is Roy Epstein has started screen sharing. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Um, if you, so I, I've gone through the map and to the best of my ability, I've estimated that uh, we, we will have 146 parking spaces on street 
I talked to uh, John Phelan last week. They are open to considering opening up uh, roughly 15 spaces that are actually on the campus. Uh, I'm not sure what those spaces are used for now, if anything, but there's about 15 spaces that conceivably could be made available, uh, which would bring us up to about 160. Uh, that is more than enough, uh, at least in the fall, because last year we only counted about 120 to 130 cars consistently each morning. That increased a bit in the springtime. Uh, so that's why I say in general, uh, we have enough space to accommodate uh, most or all of the students uh, in off, uh, mainly off the side streets. Uh, in terms of drop off area, I'm proposing um, something on the school side of the street that would accommodate about five cars at a time. Uh, I was out there a lot. Uh, over the school year, and it was very rare that more than two or three cars arrived simultaneously. That's why I'm proposing um, space for five cars. Uh, as you'll see from the map on the side of Concord Avenue, opposite from the school, uh, I think we could fit nine cars in a drop-off area, uh, kind of opportunistically, and I'll show you how that works in a minute. In terms of making this work, uh, drop off, I think we all recognize was, uh, and, and pick up were problems last year. One of the issues, uh, particularly on the school side of the street is that kids were parking uh, in the drop off zone. So it wasn't available for drop off. Uh, we've talked quite a lot about enforcement uh, which is just essential to make this all work, but I'm proposing that in the designated drop-off zones, and they will be, they should be signed drop-off, that there will be no parking uh, from 7 to 9 a.m. and again in the afternoon from 2 to 3. Uh, and on the south side, uh, no parking from 7 to 11 and again, from two to three, and I'll explain why the, the difference in time is there. Um, oh, and let me uh, mention one, one other preliminary. There was a student lottery system last year where seniors were allowed to participate in a parking lottery. Um, and juniors were not. I think whatever the, the reasons were for that decision, uh, I strongly recommended to John Phelan that that not be done this year and that students, that, that there not be a lottery because we can accommodate students and the, the juniors who are going to drive to school anyway ended up going to the side streets. And we had a um, a situation where uh, students, a lot of them being juniors, were going to side streets and at the same time, half of Concord Avenue was empty. So that, that was a kind of worst of all situations. Um, I think the students who are going to drive to school should be directed to, to park on the school side of Concord Avenue and it shouldn't matter whether they're juniors or seniors. I think there's enough space for them. Um, so is this scrolling on your screen? I've just advanced to the map. Uh, is that working? Yeah. Okay. Um, so what you're seeing here is a bit of the uh, drawings prepared by Nelson Nygaard, which is the traffic consultant that worked to develop the Concord Avenue striping plan. Um, what I've highlighted here at the top is Concord Avenue, westbound is the school side of the street. Um, this, well, I hope it's big enough to see what's going on. The way the striping plan is going to work is that the area closest to the curb is going to be reserved as a bicycle lane. So 
uh, right by the curb is the beginning of a bicycle lane. The bicycle lane goes out to this crosshatched area. A crosshatched area is a kind of a buffer zone. And then after the buffer zone, there's a parking lane. And then after the parking lane, there's a single travel lane. And that, that's the proposal. So uh, the, the parking lane is essentially in the middle of the street. And it's, uh, there are different segments which are designated for parking. Uh, some of them are, are blocked off entirely, but there's a parking section on the school side of the street that begins roughly at the foot of Orchard Street and extends back to Underwood Street uh, with some interruptions. Um, what I've outlined here is 100 feet. The yellow rectangle blocks off 100 feet, which fits about five cars. And that is pretty close to the current uh, drop-off zone, or well, the one that was used last year. And my thought was to uh, keep that area as a drop-off zone, but really make sure that students don't park there uh, from seven to nine, so it really functions as, as a drop-off zone. Um, after nine o'clock in the morning, uh, when students have arrived in school, whether somebody parks there shouldn't matter. Uh, and there is some benefit to having some small amount of parking on the street like that for high school visitors and things because the high school has its own parking issues on site. Uh, but then the students need, that has to be available as a pickup zone when students leave school. And I think at a minimum, uh, the time period from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. needs to be available because that's when the bulk of the kids leave school. Um, then the area starting from the right-hand side of that yellow box going out to Underwood Street is, is one of the main parts of what would be the student parking zone. Uh, and you can see other stuff is happening uh, on Concord Avenue there. They've striped in a bus stop uh, this crosshatched area, again, is a no parking zone. There's a bike lane uh, on the south side of the street going towards Cambridge. There's the buff, the crosshatched buffer area, and then there's another um, parking possibility on the south side of the street, but it, you can see it's all cut up. So this is a single uh, parking space, for example, right there on Orchard Street. The whole plan is laid out in more detail in the complete Nelson Nygaard drawing. Um, focusing on drop off for on the going in the other direction. So I just talked about cars going westbound, uh, going towards Belmont Center. This is now the other side of the street, cars going eastbound towards Cambridge. Uh, the side street on the extreme left of the diagram is Godin Street. And anybody who was out there in the morning knows that there was a situation in the morning where people would uh, drop off almost in the crosswalk uh, crossing Concord Avenue. And uh, then there, was actually, there were actually currently parking spaces shortly after the crosswalk and kids would zoom in there to park. Uh, and it just made it, uh, it, it made for a chaotic situation. And there was a drop off area a little bit further down towards Orchard Street, which was used, but I think could be used more successfully. So what I've outlined here is in, in the red box, uh, having this, uh, in the exact, this red box goes to, I think goes to number 258 um, Concord Avenue, which is basically the first driveway 
uh, I, I'm proposing that that be marked no stopping, no drop off. Uh, it's going to be cross hatched a bit anyway from the striping program. So it should be evident from the markings that'll be on the street that you shouldn't stop there. But I think it could be augmented with a sign that makes it clear, no stopping, no drop off, period. There is a, a short uh, section after that that is a that will be a parking area uh, in the plan. That's in that first yellow rectangle. And also to the right, that's actually another parking area uh, in the plan. That's, I'm suggesting that these two zones uh, be drop off and also pick up and be signed. Let me scroll up for a second. That's the south side of the street. And I, I'm suggesting that they, um, they, there be no parking there from 7 to 11 and again from 2 to 3 to try to um, utilize these areas as much as possible for um, drop off. The, the, the other difference uh, from last year is I'm proposing to extend the no parking zone from to end at 11 in the morning instead of 10 in the morning. Um, this is just experimental because we all have some experience now with the seven to 10, which worked okay until we got to 10 o'clock. I'm hoping that if it's, if it's extended to 11 o'clock, that will be enough of a deterrence for students who are swooping in in mid-morning. Um, I don't know what student schedules are going to be. Uh, maybe 11 o'clock uh, will be an improvement. Maybe it won't be. Uh, I think we just have to try it and see. But I, I, I would like to try to do better than what we had with the experience around 10 o'clock last year. Otherwise, the, the same features would be uh, in effect as we did last year, which is that uh, there'd be exemptions for commercial vehicles and uh, residents who could get a, a um, parking voucher or, or a, a placard to put in their car if they really wanna keep their car on the street during that time. But then after 11 in the morning, there would then be um, an unrestricted parking area. So let me, go to the, um, the specific motion that I've drafted, um, that we have a, uh, sorry, uh, that we have a uh, no parking from seven to 11 program when school is in session, that would include Golden Street below School Street, Oak Street, Orchard Street below School Street, Orchard Circle, Stone Road, Louise Road, and Emerson Street. Uh, those were the streets we included last year. There would be exemptions for commercial vehicles, uh, vehicles on public business, which would be like a, a mail carrier or something like that, or a town vehicle, or a vehicle that had a valid placard. Um, number two, for drop off and pick up that the parking spaces on Concord Avenue between uh, Golden Street and Orchard Street, south side of, sorry, south side of Concord Avenue, uh, between Golden Street and Orchard Street be posted as no parking from seven to 11 to be consistent with the other side streets. And also from two to three in the afternoon, to try to make them available as pickup uh, with the same exceptions that the restrictions would not apply to commercial vehicles, public business, or people with a placard, but uh, those have seldom been factors, particularly early in the morning uh, on Concord Avenue. Uh, and then for drop off and pick up on the school side of the street, I'm proposing 
that the parking zone in the Nelson Nygaard plan uh, that starts at Orchard Street and extends to Underwood, that the first 100 feet of that be posted as no parking from seven to nine in the morning. And again, from two to three in the afternoon. Um, and then, as I, I mentioned before, that the, the initial piece of Concord Avenue just past the uh, intersection with Golden Street, uh, that that be posted as no parking, no stopping. And then uh, regarding Orchard Street, which is a, an issue in its own right, that uh, the, there be a sign 10 feet past the fire, well, that Orchard Street be signed that there's no parking or stopping uh, from the corner of Concord Avenue to 10 feet, 10 feet past the fire hydrant. Uh, that fire hydrant, if you take a right turn onto Orchard Street, that fire hydrant is pretty close to the corner. And there's already a bylaw, you can't park within 10 feet of a fire hydrant. So I'm proposed if, if we have it, no parking, no stopping, uh, going 10, piece, 10 feet past the fire hydrant, that at least allows somebody to make the corner on Orchard Street without encountering a, a car immediately. And uh, otherwise, there are existing bylaws that you can't park within 20 feet of a corner. Um, so one issue is delineating that 20 feet and the other issue is enforcing it. The striping program on Concord Avenue, uh, Jeff Roth, maybe you can confirm me in this. It, there's gonna be a lot of paint on the street. Like here's Oak Street and it's going to be striped a lot to, de to delineate where the 20 feet buffer is where you're not supposed to park and hopefully that will encourage it should people. be pretty clear yeah i think there'll yeah. be a crosshatch the, there's a lot there. of that so you can see at oak street and there's the you know there's a lot of it at almost every corner um so at least people should not be parking on concord avenue and crowding the corner and if there's an issue on side streets i think we we just have to park we have to put in signs saying no parking here at a corner and uh, do it that way. And that is my proposal. So let me just say briefly that I think it's important to get something in place for the start of the school year. Uh, I know that I can, I can turn to Marty's uh, PowerPoint in a second. But I, I think the advantage of what I've just laid out is that it takes something that, that worked more or less acceptably last year, uh, fine tunes it a little bit, and at least gets it, it's something that can be implemented uh, quickly so it's ready for the opening of school. Uh, there are refinements that we can address uh, at a later date. And I would propose uh, Myrtle being part of that later date kind of discussion, not this morning. Uh, that later date could be in August, but uh, I, I think it raises issues that will actually just impede our ability to get ready for opening day if we try to do everything this morning. Uh, I'll let, uh, I, I think the situation on, Well, let me just leave it at that. Uh, my goal is to get something in place quickly. I, Marty raises a lot of issues in his PowerPoint and I'll, I'll turn it over to Marty in a second. Um, the, I, I think a lot of the issues that Marty raises actually more belong more properly with TAC rather than this committee because uh, they, they potentially have uh, far reaching effects on traffic flow and related issues that, uh, that could affect a large part of the town. And that, that's just something beyond the scope of this committee. 
but I'll let Marty talk through that. But uh, let me quickly recognize uh, two people and then move on to Marty. Uh, Jeff Held. Thank, thanks, Roy. Yeah, first, um, thank you. This is a very thoughtful um, proposal and I support it. Um, I think signage, clarity of signage and the related topic of coordination with the restriping project and making sure you're tapped into that or whoever implements these things at the same time are working together. I think um, Glenn is gonna be leading that. I understand from the TAC meeting last night. Um, so I think it, whatever we do and whatever select board approves should be tightly integrated there. The only question I have um, is on the drop off pick pickup where there's this sort of period of time where people could park uh, between, I guess, 11 and two or nine and two, depending on whether it's north or south. I worry that kids are going to just jump right in there somehow when they're back from lunch, and then they're not going to get out by two. And then you're in this situation where you have parking, you know, is jamming up these, these locations. So it's sort of, to me, a question for you is when you were designing this, how did, how did you think about that risk? Um, I think there are two pieces to it. One is the, the police, I, I know it's a burden for the police, but they have to be on top of enforcement. And there's a separate issue I wanna raise with my colleagues on the select board. Uh, we have parking fines. So if somebody, you know, exactly how violators would be handled is something for the police to think about. Uh, you know, initially, particularly if it's a student, maybe there'd be a warning, but you know, a second violation to my mind is a ticket. And our schedule of ticket fines has not changed for at least 10 years. Uh, I, I am going to ask my colleagues to consider raising some of the uh, parking fines because I wanna make sure we get people's attention. Uh, I, I don't want students to view uh, a parking fine as, some, as the equivalent of putting their car in a parking lot for the day. I think the, the fine has to be sufficient to be a deterrence to parking. And I think if somebody gets a ticket once, that should be enough to make sure they don't park a second time. At least that's how I was thinking about it. Uh, Larry, Larry Link. Uh, you're still muted, Larry. Uh, you're still muted. Is that any better? That's better. The first thing is I do want to read Myrtle. So, sorry, Larry, you're a little faint. Am I muted now? That seems better. Oh, it's, okay. Um, I do want to raise the Myrtle Street, Roy. I'm sorry. I know you want to put it off. If we do a plan and want to publicize it through school communications, Facebook, et cetera, I would think it's better to be consistent now. The loss of those five or six spots on Myrtle to the students is insignificant. As you said, we only hit 130 during most of the year and we can develop a plan to react if, if we find we're at 160, 165 come April. Um, I, I don't know what to do about cottage just yet, but I do feel we should be consistent to the residents uh, across that neighborhood. I would love to hear other members of the committee if, if people have similar thoughts. I'm happy to hear comment from the committee. My feeling is that Myrtle is kind of on a middle ground because it's the only, Myrtle and Cottage are the only side streets that currently have a one side of the street parking system only, unlike the other side streets. So uh, I realize that there's been some impact on Myrtle, but there you don't, you don't have the kind of congestion that was really an issue for, um, Oak and to some extent orchard. Uh, so I, 
can I, I can I, I can I respond to that? No, no, no. Sorry, I'm sorry. This is it's the so untrue. Only. No, I'm okay. sorry. This All is right. the, okay. for the committee. Um, there's also a potential interaction with um, cottage and Myrtle being to some extent overflow situations from Wellington School, and somebody already mentioned. Um, the difficulty of turning off School Street. I, I would almost like to get the school year started and see how the situation really plays out on, on Cottage and Myrtle and um, make adjustments based on that experience. I, I, and, and TAC may have to weigh in because um, I, I think the chicane program is something that can at least get us by avoiding the types of safety situations that arose on the other streets. At least that's my view, but happy to hear from the other members of the committee. So Roy, the one thought I had to facilitate it, you would have the same 7-Eleven sign that you're using on other side streets, but only place it on the lower half that allows the Wellington teachers or parents to use the upper half and see how that goes. But then uh, should the chicane would the chicane sign be left uh, also yes. as part of that? So yeah. I, I think that's something for this committee to, to uh, uh, just discuss and work through. I just don't know if there's enough time this morning to do it. Is there anybody else on the committee who would like to comment on Myrtle Street um, <laughs> and Cottage because Cottage is a similar situation? Alex. Uh, yeah, I would support also rolling in uh, Myrtle and Cottage for this discussion today. Okay. Um, anybody else? Marty, I know yeah. in your proposal you had talked about Myrtle also. Yeah, I was gonna, I, I think your, um, your points well taken in terms of um, the chicane, I think that, uh, and I, I would like to include Myrtle. I, I do though um, share your enthusiasm about getting something in place for the school year. And so, you know, to the degree that that might slow it up, I think we can, I think it's not unreasonable to take it up at a later date, but um, I think it's, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I would like to uh, consider including that. I, I, I'm happy to spend an entire meeting if necessary talking about Myrtle Cottage and because it's, when you talk about uniformity of a policy, because we've been talking about instituting some kind of chicane program on other streets as well. I, uh, I think there's an advantage to trying to be uh, um, it, taking a broad view of this and not limiting the discussion just to Myrtle at the moment. And I, I think we could do that in August or the beginning of September and, um, and do it in a more deliberative fashion. At least that's my view. Roy, my thought in including uh, Myrtle, at least in this discussion this morning, is that uh, while this proposal is, is headed in the right direction, I still feel that this will cause an issue for Oak Street uh, at pickup time. And until Oak is either reconfigured uh, in terms of its parking to either one side or the chicane like Myrtle, uh, I believe including Myrtle in this uh, activity going forward for the year will give us another data point for how this one-sided street parking on the streets that do have it can be also applied to the streets that aren't currently uh, 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 restricted for parking and as such. So that would be my uh, recommendation for, for keeping Myrtle in this discussion. Okay, and I, let me, I do wanna turn this over to Marty in a moment, but uh, I didn't, I don't recall anybody from Oak Street on the call this morning, but at least one or two residents on Oak Street told me that they were opposed to a chicane system. So, I, you know, it's... Yeah, uh, there, so I, just, just on that point though, it, it's 
again, I, I went down Oak Street around 11 o'clock um, the, in the last week of school. There were cars not parked up and down the street, but there were two cars parked across from each other. And it is a very difficult street to pass when there are cars parked on both sides of the street. Uh, understood. And, and so as we're dealing with this, it again, it compounds itself, especially around the pickup time. I'm not sure that Oak is necessarily a, the problem it is at drop off as it is at pickup. Uh, at, the, at the end of the day, Oak is, is, is more or less impassable. So, Okay. Well, let me let me just turn to Paul Garavidian for one second, and I really do want to move to Marty. Uh, Paul, the chicane system says no parking, but I my concern is that if somebody is in their car uh, waiting to pick somebody up, especially the engine is running, can can they claim that they are not parking? I would agree. Yes, they would. They when they're not parking, they're in the car. So it's more of like a double parking issue. It's it's. Um, I I don't know that the chicane system would be effective in this pickup situation because somebody could say they are not parked. Most people would just move when we try to move them along, and they would get an understanding that they're not supposed to park there. I mean, obviously, you're going to get people that violate it, so it's never going to be perfect, but. It's mostly parents picking up children. So when we tell them that they got to move on, you know, just it's about having somebody there all the time being able to do that. So that's the issue. Okay. But um, see, Larry, is there something else you wanted to add? Because I, I do really uh, want to turn it over to Marty at this point. No, I, again, I, I think it's, how do I say it? I think it's unfair if we've got this many lower, Mary, lower Myrtle residents saying they have a problem with parking, if we're gonna do this across the streets in the same area, we should be consistent. It helps drivers under, or students, they don't get mixed up about where they can park. All those places are off limits seven to 11 and doing it now so we can effectively communicate it just makes more sense to me. Okay. Uh, Marty, do you wanna talk through your presentation or? Yeah, I mean, what I'd like to do, so first of all, um, you know, I, I want to um, apologize in that I, this, I got this to Roy um, sort of later, and so he had already put forth his proposal, so I don't want to, uh, I wasn't trying to sort of make these proposals as conflicting per se, but, um, and I also don't want to muddy the waters in that I do think we need to focus on the parking today to handle that, because I think that there are certainly bigger issues that we need to handle. Um, do you, uh, I, I mean, do you wanna hand the control over to me and I'll go through my slide deck or do you wanna? Uh, well, how about if I share, you, I'll share and how about if you just tell me when to advance the screen, cause I'm. Okay. If, that might be easiest, all right, hold on a second. Uh, so just while he's doing that, let me just say, I mean, um, what I, the intent of this was, um, you know, we've had experience this whole year in sort of seeing how, um, you know, at least the traffic patterns um, have progressed with the new high school. Obviously, when we add the middle school, that'll present another wrinkle, but I think we now have experience as to what has gone on. And so um, one of the things I wanted to try and reorient is that we seem to be, um, and you know, this is my impression, um, but I know it's shared by others, is that the focus has been on um, cars and throughput of cars. That was the initial, um, guidance that was given to people who were managing intersections was around the throughput of cars and making it efficient. It was not about safety. It was not about how to ensure that, um, you know, that the students are, uh, you know, that there's safe passage to school. Um, you know, in terms of the ratings of the intersections, again, it's based on throughput. 
So uh, if we go to the first slide, um, and so I, I feel like we need to sort of focus on that and that needs to be the primary driver is around safety. And so, you know, here, you know, I'm saying the existing, they're prioritized for motor vehicles, that the stoplight was placed to address this F rating. Again, that was based on throughput. The other thing is, is, you know, one of the challenges for people on Godin is that, you know, any sort of pushback by Godin um, intentionally or unintentionally is perceived as sort of not in my backyard that we, uh, you know, and I, I am at 15 Godin, so I'm on lower Godin, that we are, you know, don't want stuff on our street. But the reality is that, um, you know, in the conversations previously, there were discussions about diluting the traffic to other streets and they were pushed onto Godin. So I feel like, um, you know, to say it's not in my backyard is also um, challenging in that everything is put in our backyard. So, um, you know, so right now what we have is uh, the decisions were made in terms of the new school to consolidate all traffic in and out along Golden Street. And this is for the high school is what I'm speaking about. So this was a change from what we had previously where we had people entering through Underwood and then coming out on uh, across, actually not even across from Godin because it was uh, there, it wasn't actually coming out on Godin. So we, we made the decision to put all cars in, out, and pedestrians and bikers all crossing at that same intersection. And so what happens is, and this is what we've seen over the year, is that bikers and walkers are forced to navigate um, down School Street, in and around cars and trucks, heading in both directions, as well as parents dropping off students. Um, if we can go to the next slide. So um, in terms of the proposal, you know, the other thing is, is the other experience we have is that we know um, that students, in terms of the issues, the major issue is not parking. Uh, the major issue is pick up and drop off. It's, uh, you know, if we look at the numbers, it's the larger proportion of how kids are getting to school and it remains a significant issue. That the designated drop-off sites, they're not, they weren't well marked and they were poorly utilized, mostly because they were after stoplights or stop signs or, or crosswalks. And so people would jump out before they ever got to the pickup and drop-off. Um, and the last point is around bus ridership and the lack of a financial incentive, that there are significant fees which are charged for bus service and that there's no fee for student parking stickers. So if we go to the next slide. So um, in terms of the working proposals, you know, we, we've actually spent a fair amount of money um, in the town on getting traffic consultants. And um, we haven't uh, necessarily taken um, their input. So one is, you know, I think the absolute mandatory working principle is that we prioritize the safety of students walking and biking to school as they are in neighboring towns and, um, and also other schools. So I, you know, when you drive around Welling, Winbrook, um, Butler, Wellington, I mean, there are, um, there are restrictions in terms of traffic and parking at these sites. Um, and so we should reserve the most efficient routes for the students, not for cars, that we should repair the sidewalks, which was one of the recommendations made by the Nelson Nygaard um, uh, consultants, and that we should limit motor vehicle traffic during the beginning and end of the school day. So again, this is more broadly, and I think obviously we're not gonna decide this today, we, we should, but I, I just wanna make sure that we're oriented on this. And that long-term solutions should be developed that promote public transit and take a broad view of transporting not just students, but all residents around Belmont, and that work in conjunction with pre-existing services. So the MBTA, the Belder bus, which is for the elders, and that we don't operate in silos. And I would say that, I, you know, I understand the point around tech, and, you know, I, I do feel like it, this should be collaborative. I, I just, I feel like, you know, it, it it needs to, um, you know, the main issue is around the high school that the town has decided to put 
not only a high school, but to add middle school students to an area that already has um, in two elementary schools and a middle school nearby. Um, I guess, um, you know, in terms of the middle school, obviously it's reoriented, but it's pushing traffic again towards the lower part between school and Concord. And so it's, we're increasing the amount of traffic. 80% of students actually are in those neighborhoods. And so by routing traffic through, by prioritizing cars again, um, you know, we're creating uh, an unnecessary hazard. And the last was about just piloting, which I think this committee has done a great job with. Um, and then the next slide is going to the proposals. And so the one was, you know, I, I think um, Roy's point around seven to 11 and making them permanent, I think we've heard this. And so I, I don't want to belabor this. In terms of the restrictions to Myrtle, I think there, there is a point around, um, the chicane piece, and so I think you know there is um, it. It does make sense to be to try and have some uniformity if we can. Um, I think for ease of the discussion today, um, you know, I think if if adding Myrtle will complicate matters and postpone our ability to make a decision, then I, I think we should put it off. Um, I think if we do add it, that um, you know, the issue about the chicane should also come back on the table as well, because I feel like um, we're having two restrictions on Myrtle and, and only one restriction on other, uh, other streets. So I think we need to be consistent with respect to that. The next slide, these proposals are, um, you know, one of the things I would recommend is that Roy's proposal in terms of uh, that we take them one by one, because I would actually argue about the pickup and drop off. I feel like, you know, uh, the Belmont High School circle, I think, you know, it should be open. I think it does create though some challenges because it will funnel more traffic down Golden Street because people will be going, wanting to go straight across um, or they'll come straight out. So I think that adds the complexity. I think the, we should be encouraging um, people to use the pickup and drop offs. And I would actually propose that we consider either doing it in front of the pool where there's pool drop off right now. And that is not a very far walk for people. It is as far as the student parking um, and that it avoids people jumping out, which is creating challenges. And people very rarely, I can tell you, make it all the way down to the pickup and drop off point if you're heading eastbound towards Cambridge. Similarly, on the westbound side, um, you know, I would actually say we should keep it um, where it is. The other would be is that there's an MBTA stop, which is going to be put back in on Edgemore. I'm not so sure that the MBTA would be open to it, but it would actually be nice if we could actually use that, that area. And so I think we should at least make an appeal to the MBTA to see if they would consider that. Um, that we allow pickup and drop off at that site as well, um, because otherwise we're going to be losing parking spots. And then if we go to the last or next one, uh, next proposal was about student parking. So I actually strongly disagree with the idea of not continuing the lottery. I feel like um, the lottery, and this was also the recommendations of um, uh, Nelson Nygaard as well, um, although they did propose an option of not having it, um, but their recommendation was to have it. I think it does send an implicit message to people that it is limited space. Um, I think it also um, encourages people to carpool, and I can tell you from talking with students that it's um, certainly made them consider it. Um, there are other towns um, like Newton who charge fees, as well as Lexington, and we did as well, and so we should use that as revenue. And, um, and we can open the lottery to juniors and seniors with proof of driver's license that they're actually able to do that. Um, and then we could use that money to either subsidize the bus service or police enforcement. And then I know we're getting, uh, and then the next slide um, is around the bus service. And I, I'm actually gonna skip this, but um, I, the point here is just that we, you know, we need to encourage people to use the bus. We have 
very low bus service. We have, uh, you know, five to eight percent, 100 kids at max. And um, partly by eliminating the bus fee, we're already subsidizing it because only 100 students are using it. Um, and that we should consider this um, and to explore other creative solutions to make it more user friendly. The reason people aren't using it to some degree is that it's, um, uh, you know, the buses arrive 60 minutes before their classes start and also um, the routes are long. And so I think this is, uh, again, for another day. Um, next slide is around um, the traffic restrictions. So again, I'd like to consider this another day, but I'm just putting it out for us to um, consider is restricting right-hand turns. So um, this again was something that was recommended in the Nelson Nygaard recommendation. Um, and this is what's done in other areas, which is pushing the traffic away from areas where students are gonna be walking. And so the recommendation would be 7 to 8.30, 2 to 3.30 to restrict right-hand turns going into the neighborhoods on Golden Street, Orchard Street, and Oak Street. Um, and then there's another question about, uh, and then also direct entry from Belmont High School up Golden Street, again, um, from those times. Um, but again, we, we should uh, consider this another day. And then I think lastly is around my last point was around, uh, if you go to the next slide, um, walking paths that, uh, you know, are, the sidewalks are in disrepair. Um, students are actually walking into the streets um, at times, certainly during the winter, because they, um, the sidewalks are impassable. And again, if we're focusing on safety, I think we need to make sure that we're um, pushing uh, that the sidewalks be passable. And again, that we make it efficient and easy and safe for students to get to school. Um, I think that's my last slide. Uh, <clears throat> yes. So, so in sum, what I would say is that what I recommend is that today, we uh, going back to Roy's proposals, because those are the former proposals, is that we um, take them you know, ideally one by one um, that I would actually encourage us to, um, you know, reconsider. I think the parking one, I think we should absolutely consider and take up and pass. I think in terms of the pickup and drop off, I would actually like us to think about on uh, the eastbound traffic, consider moving it. Uh, another option is actually to move it um, you know, is thinking about that left turn into the high school. One of the challenges is that creates kind of an impression of two lanes on that direction. Um, and so uh, we've seen cars zip around people at stoplights um, uh, and other sort of dangerous maneuvers. So one other option would be to consider it there. Um, my concern there is that, uh, you know, it, it is, again, after the cottage stop, and so people um, are going to jump out before. Similarly, um, I think that uh, it's, again, increasing the amount of traffic, although I, I think it's not an unreasonable thing for the committee to consider, but I, I would not like us to just push through the same recommendations without some discussion and input from others. Um, oops, hold on one second. Okay, uh, thank you, Marty. There's, <clears throat> um, let, let me just uh, recognize other members of the committee because there's a lot to, uh, to react to there. Uh, Larry, is your hand still up? If not, let's, uh, Jeff Roth. Yeah, thanks, Roy. Um, thanks a lot, Marty. That was a great overview. And, uh, you know, thanks for putting that together. Um, I know that this is not part of the motion, Roy, you know, in terms of, you know, this, this whole idea of the lottery system. And I, I know that you're trying to separate the two and, and trying to have maybe a separate dialogue with the superintendent on the parking lottery. 
but I, I strongly agree with Marty that I really don't think we should eliminate that. If we, the parking becomes, we, we know we have a certain amount of spots and I think that the lottery should delve out, you know, dole out those, that number of spots, uh, in some manner that the school can figure out. I think that if we make it unlimited, we're really going against the objectives and initiatives that we're trying to accomplish here in prioritizing <clears throat> people that can walk and, and bike to school and, and in a more sustainable way, uh, you know, limit and discourage the people who are driving their cars to school because yes, some people do need it, but it becomes a problem. And with the, uh, you know, with making it free and unlimited, uh, it just induces more demand and it will just create more problems. So I feel uh, that we should, you know, in terms of that topic, and I know kind of want to separate things, but I feel like that will, uh, uh, is important to, to, uh, to keep, keep on to. And I do apologize too. I need to step off the meeting. I'll try to get back on if I can, but I have a, a work commitment starting shortly. So. Okay. Um... Regarding the lottery, uh, right now, at least <clears throat> the way I've envisioned it, uh, the school side of Concord Avenue is it's going to be a public street with public parking areas uh, and with no time restrictions. It's not going to be a reserved as a student parking area it's not a student parking lot, it is, it's a public street, but the expectation is that nobody really wants to park there early in the morning for the most part, except students who are arriving to school. So they will be the public parkers on that public street. There's, and on the side streets, they are still public streets. So the, we don't, I, I think our legal ability to control um, the number of students who drive to school and where they park is different from a situation in some other schools which has a, a parking lot on the school grounds that has a certain capacity and, then, and there are no other side streets even in proximity. I, I think we're just in a different um, situation. The, and I, the, I talked with John Phelan about having students kind of quote unquote register their cars uh, in the event there is some student, you know, students park in all sorts of odd ways. They'll park facing the wrong way on the street or they'll, they'll um, create various uh, traffic issues. And the way that was resolved frequently during the year was just contacting the students. So there's an advantage to, to them notifying the school of which car it is they're driving so we can at least contact them uh, if there's a problem. But in terms of a formal lottery, which says this person may park and the other person may not, I, I just don't know that that is uh, even legally a very enforceable system the way uh, our streets are laid out. Yeah, no, thanks, Roy. I mean, I appreciate your thought, your comments on that i do agree it's tricky but we do have a precedent it was done last year and second of all you're going to be adding the 15 spots that are on campus so we do you know the school does have some leverage of those well no that, that, that's spots. not a guarantee they, they, they're looking into it so sure yeah no i understand yeah so um newt, that is newton actually does this um newton um runs they have the students register actually um through uh the town, so it's not actually handled by the school. They charge them a $25 fee and they have streets that are designated for student parking um, around the campus. So, um, I mean, there is a precedent in other towns. I think that, you know, again, the decision was made to, to add, you know, increased traffic and cars in this area and not to put a parking lot. I don't feel like we need to have a parking lot. I think green space, I mean, and this is my own opinion, but uh, green space is a premium in this area. 
we have parking spots that are available, um, that have been available, that aren't used. And I, I don't, uh, I think it is sending the wrong message. I think we should uh, be trying to limit the amount of traffic. Again, if we're focused on safety for students and not on throughput of cars, we want to discourage people from driving and encourage people to carpool and to uh, bike and walk. And so by making it open um, for all students at all times, I, I don't think that's sending the right message. And I, I would strongly disagree with that. Well, uh, just in the interest of trying to finish up by 10 o'clock, which I, I think it's important to do, I, I wanna turn to voting on the pieces of my motion one by one so that we can try to get through them. But uh, Paul, if you wanna weigh in on this, if, if Concord Avenue has parking spaces on it and a student says, I wanna park on Concord Avenue right, you know, right before Underwood Street, I don't see a way for us to prevent them from doing that. I, I just don't know on what basis you can tell somebody they can't park on the street just, just because they're a student. I mean, this other, I mean, again, Newton does this. So I don't think it's, I think Newton would be doing something that's not legal in Massachusetts. Uh, Paul, are you still there? Maybe not. Well, M Marty, let me take that up with um, Paul later on and see see if there's a clearer answer to that question. Um, but let, let me let me go back to sharing uh, my screen on the the motion and the proposed motion itself. Um, So what I would propose, there are five pieces to this. I think if we wanna have five separate votes, um, I'm happy to have a discussion and consideration of amendments to each of the five and voting them because I, it's, it's 940. I'd like to see if we could wrap up by 10 o'clock. So let me just read the first proposed motion that the following streets be posted with, the parking, restrict with parking restrictions to be in effect from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m when school is in session. And the, the list of streets at this point would be Godin Street below school, Oak Street, Orchard Street below school street, Orchard Circle, Stone Road, Louise Road, Emerson Street. The restrictions would not apply to commercial vehicles, vehicles on public business or vehicles that display a valid parking placard. So is there a discussion of this motion? Larry. I'd like to add Myrtle. Okay, so there's... I propose we amend it to add Myrtle. I'm not as strong... Okay, no, we, that's fine. So there, there's a motion to amend... Uh, to amend this motion to include Myrtle Street. Is there a second? Second. Yes, there is. Okay. Uh, so, all those, all those in favor of the motion to um, include Myrtle Street, uh, Larry. I meant to. I meant to say Lower Myrtle, Roy. I think okay. we had that issue at the top, so I apologize. Okay. Lower Myrtle, the bottom. Lower, okay. The motion is to include Lower Myrtle, which means. I, I guess Lower Myrtle being wherever the current chicane system includes that piece of Myrtle. Okay. Uh, Alex, you've seconded that motion? Second again, yes. Okay. So let me do, do a quick roll call, Larry. Hi. Uh, Roy, uh, no. Mary? No. Marty? 
Uh, no. Alex? Alex, yes. Um, Ron? Yes. Uh, Jeff Held? No. Uh, uh, Mary, were you keeping track? Yep, I got it. It's uh, four no's and three yeses. Okay, so the motion, the, the amendment is defeated. This is, let, let, just to be clear, we can certainly take this up um, not uh, at, at a reasonably near end date, but uh, the motion was defeated. Now we should vote on the original motion uh, without the amendment. Um, so all those in favor? Uh, Roy, yes. Mary? Yes. Marty? Yes. Alex? No. Larry? I'm going to abstain. Okay. Um, Jeff Held? In favor. Yes. Uh, is there any other member, member of the committee that I've missed? Okay. Uh, Mary, the result there was? Uh, you missed me, Ron. You missed Ron. Well, Ron, sorry. Yes. Thank you. You had one no, four yeses, and one abstention. Okay, so first motion carries. Um, second motion that the parking spaces on Concord Avenue South Side between Godin Street and Orchard Street uh, be posted as no parking from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. and from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. when school is in session the restrictions would not apply to commercial vehicles, vehicles on public business, or vehicles that display a valid parking placard. Is there any discussion of that motion? Yes. So, I'm sorry. So, this is just to clarify. So, as I always get this wrong, so we're talking about uh, South Side. So, this is uh, eastbound traffic heading towards Cambridge, right? Yes. So, I would actually. Um, I mean, I, I would actually like to table this for us to, um, because I think we should consider uh, the uh, parking in front of the pool or parking, moving it. Um, so I would not be in favor of, um, I think we should have more time. For okay, so Marty, so the motion is, the, the, is to table um, the, South side of Concord uh, right. drop off areas? Right. Okay. Um, so that, uh, is there a second for that? Sorry, can I just ask a clarifying question here? Marty, is the intent to move this to a later date to, um, I, I guess that's that's mainly my question. Why, why would you? Well, it's just, I, I... I don't, I, I don't think this has not been a workable site for the pickup and drop off. Okay. And so, um, I, I mean, if, you know, and so that's, that's my only, I mean, I actually feel like three, four and five are ones that we should, we should pass and that we should consider. I feel like this one though, is it's, it is um, after um, Golden Street, it's after Cottage Street, um, and it is one that is just not used. And so, um, would like us to consider it at a later date. We could alternatively, we could pass it and then reconsider it. I mean, you know, the reality here is that, you know, um, these are signs that um, we could move around. So, regardless, you know, if they're making the signs, we're going to use the signs. It's just, you know, we're, we may not be putting it here because I think that it'd be more prudent actually to put it in front of the pool where there is pickup and drop off right now for the pool. And so it would be uh, very easy to utilize that area and it wouldn't bring more cars well, down in front. Well, Mar Marty, do you, want, do you want to table number two or not? Yes, okay. I would like to table it. Is there, is there a second? I have a comment. Okay. Well, all right. Marty, this is improving the situation 
it's not making it perfect, but there's a red zone that's blocking. It obviously has to be enforced or we have to get the message out, but this is hopefully improving that situation. I think it's just not tenable. I mean, I think that, you know, it's uh, people, I can tell you in practice, uh, and I'm, I'm sure you've seen it as well watching it. Um, I mean, if people feel like this is the appropriate place for a drop off, then they should vote for it. But I, I don't think it is. I think that, you know, what we've seen is that people are jumping out at whenever they stop. And whether that stop is at the bottom of Godin Street, whether that stop is in front of Cottage, whether that stop is, you know, that's where they're going to jump out. And well, putting it I, past it does not work. The, um, Is, is the motion we, we we need to move on here? Is the so is there's a motion to table? Is there a second on the motion? Second. Okay. So uh, we need to have a vote on the motion to table. Uh, Roy, no. Mary, no. Marty, yes. Okay. Ron, no. Alex, no. Larry, no. Uh, Jeff Held, no. Uh, so the motion to table has been defeated. Um, and Can again, you know, we were adaptable last year, and this is again something where, you know, we, we can revisit this in the future, but um, we, no, we now need to vote on the second motion, which is this uh, <clears throat> proposed drop-off area on uh, south side of Concord Avenue. Uh, Alex, you have a question? Yeah, I just want to uh, say that Marty's comment about, you know, the drop off about uh, kids jumping out of the cars wherever they end up kind of stopping with the lights happens on the same on the north side as well. It's not just a south side problem. You're seeing the same thing happening on the other side of Concord as well. So I'm not sure ultimately how useful either of these um, drop off zones are uh, or being taken advantage of. Um, anyway, it was just a comment. Okay, well, uh, I'm actually optimistic that this scheme will work considerably better than what we had last year, but you know, we'll see. I'm sorry, um, what, can I just, what's, I'm sorry, what's the scheme that's different? That uh, students will not be parking. That there's a, there, there, the drop-off area on the south side of Concord was used last year, it really was, but not enough as, as much as it could be. And part of the reason was students parking in the parking spaces cluttered up the area. This, I think, will be a much clearer space for the half hour or so that it's really needed. And I'm hoping that people will use it. I, I'm worried that the library will just be not used because people will feel it's too far. But um, well, I think that. <laughs> But we, but we need to vote, Marty, we, we need to vote now just to dispose of all of these issues. And uh, the motion to table failed. So we, we should vote now on uh, the second motion. And I, I've lost track. Uh, I think we voted on it. No. No, we haven't. We've only voted. We, we voted yeah. on the table, not on the actual motion. So uh, I, I would move favorable action on the second motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, roll call, Roy, yes. Mary? Yes. Marty? No. Ron? Yes. Uh, Alex Thurston? Yes. Larry? Yes. Uh, Jeff Held? Yes. Okay. Hopefully I haven't uh, overlooked anybody. All right. Uh, Third motion, drop off pickup that the parking spaces on the north side of Concord Avenue from the start of the parking zone opposite Orchard Street and extending east for 100 feet be posted as no parking from 7 to 9 a.m. and from 2 to 3 p.m. when school is in session. Is, uh, <clears throat> is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Yeah, so uh, I would like to clarify, though, the comment that Alex made before about the, the north side. So 
there, there is a difference between the north and the south sides in terms of this drop off. Um, again, I mean, it, it is, uh, it is, there, there are no, there's not, there are no stops for, for students coming into this. They can actually flow into this area, unlike the south side. Um, I, I do support this as continuing. Um, all right, any further discussion? Okay, <clears throat> take a roll call. Uh, Roy, yes. Mary? Yes. Marty? Yes. Ron? Yes. Uh, Alex? Yes. Larry? Yes. Jeff Held? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, next motion. Uh, uh, Concord Avenue on the south side from Golden Street uh, to the driveway at 258 Concord Avenue be posted as no parking, no stopping. That This is essentially the area marked in red uh, on the sketch that I discussed earlier. Um, is there a second? Second. Yeah, is there any discussion? Could you restate uh, the motion? Is it for... Uh, every day in the week or is it only on school days oh uh good point good point yeah um i would say all the time because actually uh, i don't know if i have it on this computer uh jeff roth is not here but i i believe that this area is already cross hatched uh on the nelson nygaard plan as uh, no parking. So this uh, whole restriction is actually redundant, but it's really just to emphasize the fact we don't want anybody um, impeding any form of traffic uh, right by that corner. Uh, so th this would be all the time. It, it, what, what's designated here on the Nelson Nygaard plan is uh, just the single lane for vehicle traffic continuing down Concord Avenue plus a single um, bike lane, at least initially. It then transitions to include a parking area, but only later where I have it in yellow. But it, but so the red zone would be here all the time. Uh, I just have one quick comment, Roy, on this. I, I support it. But I think, you know, given that the bike lane is going to be on the curb and all these things we're talking about on Concord are all more in the middle of the road, I think making sure the signage is clear, making sure this effort is coordinated with what Glenn's doing to implement the bike lane and the parking switch, uh, so-called restriping. And then third, the communication, as everybody is saying, with the superintendent to the parents and the kids. So they're clear about the, all these things. Um, because if we don't educate and nothing's perfect, it's not gonna, if the signage isn't good and or we don't educate, it, it's not gonna be as successful. People will just, it's hard to change behavior as we're all agreeing, people just jump out and that's gonna happen. Um, so I, th I think we have to implement this in a, in a careful way. Yeah, and Paul and, and Glenn Clancy have both uh, reviewed these sketches, so it's it's at least passed the first test. But um, I, I I agree, this will be a somewhat iterative process. Um, okay, um, I think uh, the motion was seconded. To, uh, yes, it was. It was okay. seconded. Thank you, Mary. Let's do a quick uh, roll call. Roy, yes. Mary, yes. Marty. Yes. Right. Thank you, Mar uh, Ron. Yes. Uh, Jeff Held. Yes. Alex. Yes. Larry Link. Yes. And thank you. Um, okay. And the last piece uh, regarding Orchard Street, uh, that Orchard Street southbound. That's so. That's basically the right hand when you take the right off of Concord. 
at Orchard Street southbound from Concord Avenue to 10 feet past the fire hydrant in front of number three Orchard Street be posted as no parking, no stopping. And again, that would be uh, all the time because uh, I think I think that's certainly my intent anyway. Uh, is there a second? Second. Thank you. Um, any discussion? Now I just point out that Orchard Street uh, is one of those that that piece of Orchard Street is one of those uh, critical points that uh, is become de facto a big pick up and drop off location. I'm hopefully hoping that we've controlled the parking issues there, but uh, I hope this will be an improvement. And then if we need to make further adjustments, we can revisit it uh, as the year goes on. Um, so let me take a roll call on this last motion. Uh, Roy, yes. Mary? Yes. Marty? Uh, come back to Marty. Ron? Yes. Uh, Jeff Held? Yes. Larry? Larry, was that a yes? I did, yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh, Alex? Yes. OK. Uh, Marty, are you still there? Uh, I don't know what happened to Marty. Uh, hold on one moment. Uh, is Marty on this? Marty, did you vote on that? Uh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Listen, um, uh, so it's, it's 9.58. I, you know, this is a lot to consider in one morning, and this is not the last word on the subject either, but uh, I, I think it was important to do what we did. Um, we, we can reconvene, I, I would propose um, sometime in August and pick up other issues that can include a broader consideration of Myrtle Street, the chicane and so forth, because uh, I think they need further study. Uh, the, the last thing I would like to accomplish this morning is just the minutes uh, and Mary again has done a a uh, hero's job in keeping minutes for these meetings. Um, are there any comments on the draft minutes from the June 24th meeting? Uh, if not, I would entertain a motion to accept the minutes from June 24th. Second. Uh, okay. So moved and second. <laughs> Well, you can't second your own motion, Alex. Anybody else? It's moved. Does somebody, Larry, second? Okay. Uh, uh, Roy, yes. Uh, Mary? Yes. Uh, Ron? Yes. Jeff Held? Yes. Alex? Yes. Larry? Yes. Marty? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, everybody. Um, Roy, Mary, I have one, one last comment. Yes, I would very much support Marty's uh, focus on safety rather than resident uh, comfort, which is what the whole parking issue has been about. When I joined this committee, I thought we were going to talk about student safety, and uh, we somehow deviated from that. And I would welcome going back to it. Uh, I completely agree with that, but you can see how much time and effort has gone into just addressing something as uh, I was going to say as simple as parking, but it's it's not as simple as parking. But the the there are broader issues. For example, the situation of the sidewalks that run in the questions of budget, and um, it, it, it everything becomes complicated. Uh, but but Ron, I completely agree that we we uh, should not lose sight of those things. Uh, and, and plus the interaction with TAC, I think is very important, particularly if you're proposing restrictions on uh, 
right hand turns and traffic for a street that is a principal through street like Godin, uh, I, I think the implications of that need to be explored by um, people who have, I think, uh, greater skills in analyzing those types of network problems than, than we have on this committee. Yeah, this is just my view. Just one more I, I agree with Ron and, and Marty on this. I don't think we've done a very good job of encouraging communications. We have all kinds of people interested in environment and climate, yet we have tons of parents driving twice a day to get their kid to school. With the new bus 54, we may have opportunities to get more kids on that bus as opposed to the school bus. I don't think that's our job necessarily, but we can certainly start it. There's a great climate action committee at, at campus and we should be leveraging those students' uh, interest in this as well. You know, there are a lot of unanswered questions out there. You know, we had bike ridership that was about 120 bikes in the fall. That dropped to about 80 bikes in the spring. Stay by a cosmic coincidence, the number of student parkers increased by about the same amount. And I- Licenses. You know, I, but, you know, to have only 80 bike riders in a school population of 1400 is, is to my mind, disappointing. Um, but that those are things we can turn to uh, in the next meeting. Um, anything else people would like to discuss? It's now 10.02. Uh, take a motion to adjourn. Go on. Uh, so thank you everyone. Uh, I know that uh, meeting in July is not everybody's favorite activity, but uh, thank you for this. And um, I will get in touch with a meeting for August, uh, you know, as soon as I can come up with a date and we can continue with all of this. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are all adjourned and we will uh, see you next time. Okay. Yeah. Bye-bye.